Here we go, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kuder, local realtor here in Ottawa with Sutton Group Ottawa. And I'm here today with Sophie El Halawani with Cafe Cristal. Yeah. It's a fantastic coffee shop that we have. Coffee shop, brunch, the whole works. It's a delight. It's on Strandherd. If I take you back to, you know, nine years ago when you started the business, what are some of the challenges that you faced? Not knowing. That was my biggest challenge. Tell me more. So, as I said, I came from completely different background. I came from administration. I came from social work. And I had to learn the hard way. Learning by doing. I just jumped. What I did is I went to Toronto. I took a course about opening a coffee shop and it was three days. And that's how I started. But in reality, when you start facing the reality is different. Working with supplier is different. And you actually don't know what actually needed or not needed. Some people will come and will present all these beautiful things for you. But because you're still learning and you're learning by implementing and seeing the result it's different from learning like with experience Mm -hmm. so i was learning and learning and it was a huge big world for me like uh, dealing even with the building like with the construction for the place and what okay what machine should i take or maybe this machine is not really the necessarily one because you can replace it with something else that's more affordable and will give you still the same quality so that was my biggest challenge at the beginning and understanding the industry itself yes like what what makes a good cup of coffee Mm -hmm. why people will come back for that particular cup of coffee what's in that beans why are those beans very special the roasting the different roast uh tea leaf okay what makes a good tea blend crepe we have our own crepe recipe and developing that crepe batter took actually a few months because i wanted just that particular flavor, I always call it as this is our flavor profile. I want that flavor. I want people when they come to Cafe Cristal, they know that this grape batter, they will taste it only here. So that was the biggest challenges for me, learning, 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 and not knowing. So building the judgment skills about what is the good quality mm-hmm. or this is uh, something you can survive on or yeah. what will bring people back. And, and how do you... F- think you faced, or sorry, you came out the other end facing those challenges. What what did you do? What did you implement to get there? I research. I am one of those people. I, like, I think one of my two biggest skills is two things. Research and finding information and thinking out of the box. Mm-hmm. I don't just close my mind on, okay, this is the only thing. I always search, yeah. look for something new. And I start going and attending a lot of conference, trying to find, okay, what's going on? Asking people and interaction with the end user, with my customer. Because yeah. by the end of the day, my customer is the best, the best feedback I can get. 100%. A business person. Someone once had mm-hmm. told me it's, it's all about the client and the product right yeah. and the two marrying together like just ha- that's how you have a, a fantastic business is you focus on the customer and you focus on the product i usually say there is four element for building a successful business management team product and experience mm-hmm. and experience now is as important as the product as everything else and that's because how is the world changed around yeah. us people looking for the experience plus the good food or like good coffee or cup of tea. So if you have these four, if you're able to implement them, then you're satisfying your customer. Your equation will be completed. 100%. And I want to actually add to that when you say experience, it's there's plenty of things out there to say that it's not about what happened or what's going on or people will not remember what they've done or what mm-hmm. they was said or what but they would remember how they felt about it exactly and the experience is really where i came into cafe cristal how i felt about the service mm-hmm. like one of my favorite things when i was there for example i'm busy networking i'm hosting an event i'm not really in the like i'm i'm trying to figure out like i'm not going to sit there and try to you know figure out where people are going to get their coffee and things like that and i just turned around to one of your uh, servants or wait, waiters and I said, hey, I'm looking for, can you, can you get me an Americano? And I didn't have to, I didn't have to say anything else. It was just like the way that he just said, don't worry about it. I'll find you. So I continued doing what I'm supposed to be doing there, which is hosting and, and you know, creating that atmosphere with, with the people that I was there. 
not worrying about the fact that my coffee is yeah. coming. And it was perfect the way I liked it. Yeah. And that's really it is like just the experience. You're creating that sense of like, if I can make people feel a certain way, that feeling will stay with them forever. That's exactly the point, Fatty. It's about the feeling because as a human being, we're all around feeling. How you feel about it, it's what will build that connection. So you will feel that you belong to this place. And that's what we always focus since day one in Cafe Cristal, building that I belong to here. Mm -hmm. Like I have customer, I have seen things dating for the first time. I had their wedding shower. I had their baby shower. We build that yeah. connection. They Even like if, if they see something, they don't feel like, no, no, it's, it shouldn't be this way. They will come and they will tell me like, I, I've been here since day one and no, like, uh, look, we have to do this and do that. That connection, that's involvement. It's actually what, what yeah. makes the, what's make that experience for people. And I'll tell you a funny story that happened actually on that network event that we were there to Add to what you're saying. A couple of ladies showed up to the event. They were not invited. They were actually just uh, coming to have a brunch. Mm -hmm. The two of them, two girlfriends, trying to have brunch, and they realized at the at the front door that it's actually closed for a private event. And then one of the one of the people that were there was like, "Well, if you guys want to like come, you can come. No problem. Let me check with the other person that was hosting, mm -hmm. my friend Sarwar. Sarwar was like, "Yeah, that's no problem. Come on in." They felt like they belong mm -hmm. to the event. They also felt like they were. You know, like they, they did not miss out on Cafe Cristal's mm -hmm. date that they had, which yeah. was phenomenal. And yeah. I'm glad that we were able to be a part of their sort of experience with mm -hmm. you guys. But it's the fact that they were so disappointed. And that's the reason why they, we, we let them in is because they were so disappointed <laughs> I know. Uh, that they had this sense of like, oh, like we love this place. We always come here and it's closed. We're like, no, 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 we're not going to make this happen. Come on in, enjoy it. And, and, Thank you. you I know. appreciate it. I see that a lot, like because we host a lot of events and we try as much as we can to make it up to people. I always like, even, even unfortunately, if I can let them sit, but I don't let them go without having their, at least their drinks. Yeah. So I will give them the order complimentary on us because we're sorry, like we couldn't give you the experience, yeah. but at least let them enjoy our product wherever they are. 100%. And one of the things you've mentioned too, like your, you know, two biggest strengths that you have is the research. And then also you did say that, Thinking out of the thinking box. outside of the box. I'm gonna add to it is you're a doer, mm. you know, and 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 this is the reason why you're here today is because like you you actually like you implement things like you you act on what you learn and mm -hmm. you know the thinking outside the box and you do it because that's the only way for you to just kind of go forward is like doing the work that's supposed to be done. Yeah. With Cafe Cristel, looking at you know franchise opportunities and things like that, do you see yourself partnering up with bigger franchise owner or what have you? To kind of learn from them or get some of the blueprints as far as figuring that out? Or mm -hmm. how, how do you? Why not? Like, uh, if I see that, uh, I will tell you something. I'm one of those people. Sometimes I also rely a little bit on how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. If I feel that connection, if our brain will see the same thing and we see the same future, why not? I'm still like, I have been in business only for nine years and I know there is and amazing business people out there. Why not? I will learn from them. Mm -hmm. And I will take the business for the next level. But there is some criteria that I wanted to stay there. And if they are okay with it, why not? Business collaboration have made fabulous stuff. So why not? Now, we've talked a bit about the challenges that you've had. Tell me about a moment where you feel like, okay, I'm going to quit. Honestly? Yeah. I haven't. <laughs> Well, you haven't quit. You're here. No, I haven't had that moment. You haven't had that moment. No, because I get the opposite feeling. I was like, it will happen. <laughs> I will get to that stubbornness yeah. that, no, it, it's not. I will. I will continue. I will do this. I will find a way. But I don't think I ever, like, I, I've been through a uh, huge challenges, specifically in COVID. Because I will tell you something. When we opened, the business was doubling number year after year after year. And in COVID, I went down to, when I did a good day, I would do a $50 sale. So that was a huge, a huge emotional shock because I was seeing my business doubling numbers. Like the year after year, I was literally doubling. So how come, where, oh, well, well, where is all of the people? And I was like, no, I will not let this destroy me. Mm -hmm. This business, the capital came from my father. I will not let him down. And I love it. It doesn't deserve that kind of end. So it made me, it pushed me more. 
actually to do more to have this business survive. Of course, I had some support of my family, and but I don't think up to this moment I had that moment saying I'm gonna quit. I don't think it's in our DNA as Palestinians. No, to quit. <laughs> maybe. And it's not. I, I, I'm being very honest with yeah. this. When I, I like, I have so many situations where I should have quit, and I just can't. It's like exactly. you don't. We don't know when to quit. We will keep trying until something happens. What I wanted to unpack a little bit on, you know, having support, someone like your father helping you mm -hmm. with the business and all of that. How did that make you feel? What do you think it's the good, the bad, the ugly sort of situation about it? And the capital for the business, like, because of my lack of knowledge at the beginning, I actually, it costed me more than it should be. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know now that the budget should have been completely different from the yeah. budget that we put at the beginning. Um, so he helped with the financial part. And that's make me or made me more responsible because I always feel like this is my father's lifetime. It's his saving. It's his the days that he worked hard, he he got tired and he still, he trusted me. So now I feel like I have the obligation. This is have has only the only option it has. It's just to, to be better, yeah. to be exist, to, to be successful, to grow. Failure is not an option. Well, we're a human being, and I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But I know from my side, I will do everything I can until the last breath that I have. That yeah. this is cannot go down. There's a saying that. I've heard a while back is like the day that, and then hopefully your, your dad is still here. here and still be here for quite mm -hmm. some time, uh, where it literally said, the day that your father passes, it's the day that you lose the only man on earth that yeah. wants you to be better than him. 100% true. 100% true. Yeah. And uh, my father is a businessman, so he understands business. And he's been in business for like almost 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. And he been through the challenges when his business actually collapsed two times. And every time he will come back even stronger and better and more successful. So for me, he's an idol. Like he's the, the, the best person I would ever look into. And that's that trust when that wisdom, when that years of business and understanding, he trusted me. I can't let him down. 100%. And as far as um, working with family, affecting the business in any way? <laughs> it's good and bad, I would say. A 50-50 thing. So I started actually as a partner with my brother. But then he got married and his life got, got into a different direction. So now he works in the government. So it's beautiful to have that always support. So if I need something, he would jump in. My other two brothers, like if I need something, they jump in. Uh, my oldest brother, uh, brother, he's amazing business person and his ideas and brain and he's a consultant so i always get back to him that not good part is that you always have you have to be more linear like more flexible when it comes to them like if a mistake happened you can't really be as stuff like as firm in terms of the mm -hmm. correction but it's nice it's having the business with a family um give you safety you know you're not alone. You yeah. know that they will always be there. And in my lowest time, if they were not there, like they, they tried to help me as much as, as they could at the time. And they still, until this day, when I need help, they will jump and they will help me. That always gave me a feeling that I'm safe. But no matter whatever happened, they are here. Mm -hmm. It's it's an anchor. It's an anchor. Like for me, for example, I, I have three brothers and I always look at it as no matter what, if life goes to shit, I've got those three to back me up, yes. no matter what happens. Exactly. I want to go back to, you know, some of the folks that are watching, like just let them know about how hard is it to start a business? What are some of the processes that they need to kind of learn or understand? And, you know, I'm being a little bit selfish with this one because I do work with a lot of business owners mm -hmm. that are trying to start something. And most of the time it's an education piece for me. I have yeah. to kind of give them that. So I'm going to rely on you on this one. Oh, my to God. To give them a little bit more of an education. <laughs> Okay, the starting a business requires a lot of stuff, to be honest. First of all, you really need to believe in your idea. That's the emotional, that's before even you start the paperwork. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in it, you will never have the motivation to continue. Yeah. It's not an easy process. 
it's exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting by all means, emotionally, financially, your time, your family. Like, you know, when you start this journey, specifically the first few years, you're 100% there. So yeah. that's if, if, you, if you're married, like I'm single. So it, I had the, all the time for it. But if you have a partner, your partner has to know and understand this is a two people process. They will, like, you will need that support of your partner and your understanding that their time, their effort, they, everything is going to be there. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing, the first motivation is have an idea and believe in it. And you study how realistic is that idea. If it's realistic or not. Can it actually be done or not? Mm -hmm. When you do all the educational part, like looking into... Uh, what is your idea? Is it realistic? Can we do that? Is our finance possible? How we can get the finance? Then, and that's when you go and put a business plan together. Exactly. You have to look into the external factor. Okay, like uh, is it a, an office? And that business need to you need to study the market for that service you're providing, or a physical location. Where is that location? How is that location will fit and help? the success of your business because we have seen businesses die because of wrong location. Location, location, location. location I put location, it out last location. week, I think. I put a piece on that. It's Yeah. It's you literally live and die by your location. Exactly. And one of the things we've talked about earlier, and I'm going to go back to what mm -hmm. we're talking about building the business, but um, you've talked about how, well, we mentioned how like Bar Haven just grew so many times in the last nine years. Mm -hmm. Those are one of the things that I talk about with location is being able to kind of have the foresight and go, I'm here. And this is kind of the ideal customer base mm -hmm. that I have. And I'm getting this much foot traffic. What is it going to look like in five years, 10 years? Yeah. Maybe reach out to the city planners. Mm -hmm. Maybe talk to the folks that know a little bit more about this. And that's where hiring someone like myself like, comes yeah. in the picture. Is it 100%. knowing those people? Yeah, because real estate, you, you, like I think one of the stuff you do, you study the neighbor. Yeah. So you know how is the development in that area is going to happen and Honestly, the research that I did was a resource. It's Absolutely. actually it was a through real estate. Um, I think I had a friend and he sent me a link and I was looking into the numbers because I wanted to know, okay, how, like what is that area? Can that area actually yeah. make my place successful? Will people able to afford? Because for honesty, I wasn't planning to sell a $2 cup of coffee. Um, it's and, it's and an expensive one. So Exactly. And then the, the cool thing about like having the right knowledge about the area is... Knowing that, look, I'm. If I find your store, I'm gonna give you a gold mine because mm -hmm. this is what's coming, and you don't know about it. We know about it because of yeah, some of the connections. Because you know exactly real estate. No, because you're all about the area, the development in the area, and that's how I got my information. So I definitely recommend that for anyone who's looking for physical location, have the help from real estate yeah. because they know. That's their area. And that's one of the things that I learned in business. Ask the people about their know because you will research, you're find never information. Be, but exactly. Not and then the other expert. thing too is like as a business owner, you're never gonna be the expert on all matters. Exactly. Yeah. Figure out you, you're good at this. Yeah. Okay. Well, I need this and this and that. This and that, I don't have the expertise for it. I'm gonna mm -hmm. go and hire for it. Yeah. Interview. Yeah. Interview five. It doesn't you don't have to interview one or mm -hmm. two. Don't hire the first person you're going to find. Interview, ask them. The biggest thing that I always ask, I tell people, go call my people. Go yeah. call clients that I've worked with. Yeah. Here's yeah. here's people that I've worked yeah. with. Why? Because you're never going to know how my service is unless you talk to people that have. It's the credibility. Exactly. You will know. Like, you will know that's actually legitimate and you know that you are in good hands. Exactly. And you will need it at the beginning. As I said, was my biggest challenge was the not knowing. Not knowing. And this is where I started to know, like, yeah. okay, this is one of the things that I learned. Ask the expert. And I think we were talking know. about earlier off camera. It's mm -hmm. it's not what you know, it's who you know. Who you know. And yeah. sometimes who you know is really what's going to make it or break or it for break you. It. So I'll give you a very, very simple example. I don't know everything about real estate. I work with a partner that helps me with staging and this and that. Mm -hmm. And, and that, there's nothing wrong with saying I have a lack in this area. Yeah. I'm going to hire this expert to do it. Yeah. You know. Why not? So let's mm -hmm. go back to, again, building a business plan. Now mm -hmm. we've got the business plan going. What's the next step? Implementing. You have to start um, actually implement the business plan because you, on the paper, everything is amazing. Everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. In reality, you'll start having all these things thrown in your face yeah. and you have to deal with it. 
And that's where I'm saying you need that partner who will be supportive because most of the time, because most of the time, as you know, it's uh, it's about how you deal with that, how you handle it. Are you going to handle that in the right way or you will do a mistake? Yeah. I did mistake. I have to admit, I did mistake. and But I learned a few of those mistakes because I didn't know. So all that circle will go when building the place itself, building like uh, the construction phase, uh, building the, buying the equipment. So it's really phases. After all of this, that big headache and like going over all of these will come the actual work. And now it's a completely different stage. Yeah. You're now working with a human being and human behavior. You're hiring the staff. And that's also a fully new thing. As you were saying, we have to know the people that we have to find the people who has it. So you start building the skills. At yeah, the because beginning. we did say like it's, it's about fostering it in them. Yeah. They already have it or they have the ability or yeah. the capacity to learn it. Yeah. Your job is just to foster it. Exactly. Because if, if it's not there, it will never be. Exactly. And I actually have seen that. I have seen the people who has it and they were just brilliant when they when the work come and those are the people who because you know like that type of business you're working with people who's always they are there for short term so those people who has it you actually build something more in them and they succeed in a different role in life yeah. and i have seen it i can tell you like I, my first job was at subway mm -hmm. i can tell you that there is no such thing as a job that doesn't teach you something yeah and if that's what you're doing you're just you know going in there to clock in clock out you still gonna clock in, clock out. You will learn something one way or another. Yeah, it's having the right boss that sees stuff in you, that's yeah. able to foster it in you. It's really what's gonna make you remember that job forever. It's true. And there's so many things that I remember about that that job. Mm -hmm. I I still go and say hi to Ali every time I get a chance to go say hi. And yeah, they own the place on Maribel. They're no longer there. They sold it, but. You know, it just being able to kind of go back and, and thank that boss for it because of what they instilled in you. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things they mentioned, so basically, okay, we have the idea. We talk to a few, you know, experts. We, we get education. the business plan together. Do you suggest doing a business plan on your own or do you suggest going to an accountant or somebody, an expert or both? It has to be both, to be honest. You have to be involved in your business plan. Otherwise, you will not see it. Mm -hmm. And you can tell people. But it will be just uh, a copy and paste model. Yeah. No, you yeah. have to be involved in every aspect. This is what we were talking about. I, I got the help from real estate who gave me the information, but I actually was looking to those information. Mm -hmm. I was involved in those yeah. information. So it has to come from two people. Some parts, 100% you might not know, which is like the accounting part or maybe some marketing ideas. And so you will need to ask marketing people, but you have to be involved. Don't rely without, like, like blindly rely on people because it's not going to work specifically no, at the sure. beginning. Because at the beginning, it's your actual learning. It's you, how you will build the judgment if this is going to work or not. You have to be involved in doing it, developing it, and seeing how it's when it implemented the reaction of the result. Yeah. And another part as well, too, that you mentioned is after now you're going to start doing it. You found a place. You found a location, you decided to put a lease agreement in place, you got everything going. The next step is to start building. Mm -hmm. And this is where a lot of organizations that I work with, they haven't even factored that into their business plan or they haven't even factored that in their budget as well too. Like, That's oh my God, shot. it's going to cost me. Mm -hmm. Yes. The reason being is because there is no such thing, especially with commercial, there is no such thing as a ready to go place. Mm -hmm. There is, here is an empty shell. You fix it whatever way you want to fix it. And it's yeah. on you. It's not on us. Yeah. And oh, by the way, we might give you a little bit of a break for the first month or two. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you're lucky, if you, your agent negotiated that for you to get that break, to be able to do the work and you're not paying the you rent. You know, there is something very interesting here. Honestly, this is what I 100% recommend having a good real estate with you in that, in that their, like process. Because they not only can get you a good deal in terms of like your rent or your lease, but you could get away with like some leasehold improvement. Exactly. And that, like that, a good real estate 
can make a huge difference in your finance and 100%. your budget. Especially if that landlord really wants you in. Mm -hmm. And and this is where you, again, having a really good real estate agent that's going to know that, okay, this is, we've got a shot here. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able to negotiate the full thing for you. We're going to be able to get you in with, a, you know, development costs, maybe kind of halfway, meet you halfway. They pay half, you pay half, get you maybe two or three months for free. And I'm going to make it easier for you to move in. Yeah. And that's going to, you know, shrink your budget a little bit, which is yeah. fantastic. It's, it's going to help you, uh, you know, get you on the right track. And it's going to give you six months instead of a six month runway, maybe a 10, 12 months runway that yeah. if shit hits a fan, you're still able to put food on the table. Yeah. Um, you mentioned something amazing here. That relief that your, your real estate can get you can make a huge difference in your operation after you open. And I will yeah. tell you why. That extra bucks that you were able to save, you will need them. Exactly. The and that's why I called it a you runway. Need them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the reason why we call it a runway in business for folks that are watching, it's really, it's how far you can go before you drop off. Yeah. Just like a runway for a plane. Yeah. And, you know, they've had those and it runways. Will happen, exactly. It will you're happen. You're going to go up to the end of the runway and then all of a sudden you're going to drop off. Yeah. Yeah. If I can get you a runway that's safe for you to fly, mm -hmm. that's my job, is to get you that enough runway for you to fly. Mm -hmm. And the beginning of the operation, when you open your store, you will be hit with a lot of surprises. Mm -hmm. Things you like, what, what is this? When when did this happen? You yeah. always have that feeling like, what's going on here? And that, the good backup you have will save you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is what I was saying earlier. Thank you so much for doing this because like we're, we're given an education, I feel like, to the mm -hmm. folks that are watching about, you know, using your story as a business to give them an education about how to open up a business mm -hmm. in a way. The other piece that we've maybe didn't touch on because in your situation, you did say the finance came backing with your... your I actually like had, like had the some. majority, but I, ha I I went through also like a few business yeah. owned, but... Um, and that's one thing a lot of folks father. that I find they don't have that accounted for is like, oh, I'm just going to go to the bank and get a loan. It doesn't right. always work that way. Yeah. The bank wants to see mm -hmm. that you have mm -hmm. a little bit of skin in the game that if you do fall and, and scratch... Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're also hurting, it's not just them. I will tell you something. And I, I went through that situation with a potential franchisee. Yes, you have to have some finance. Don't rely completely on your business. You, you Okay, if you have, if you need a business no loan, nothing wrong with that. But don't think that you will build everything by the business loan. There is an amazing business loan covered by the government of Canada. There is a lot of support that you can use. Take advantage, have those. I always recommend that over the uh, like other business yeah. loans, but you have to have something from you because you don't want to open and just keep paying loans, paying loans, paying for loans, sure. and it's for exhausting sure. and stressful. Yeah, and then for mm -hmm. people that are watching, like pop it in the comment and put in any questions when it comes mm -hmm. to that. I have a lot of contacts that are you know from, mm -hmm. for example, uh, Business Development Canada and, and a few others yeah. that we can you know put, point you in the right direction. Yeah. Really appreciate that you bringing that up. Mm -hmm. The one thing for sure that I wanted to kind of leave the folks on is a piece of advice from you as a business owner that's been mm -hmm. through the rough and thick and, and the rough and thin and, and all of that those years, especially COVID. Mm -hmm. Give us a little bit piece of advice about your business and how you, they can go about building a business? The best, the best advice I would give is don't give up. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but if you give up, you lose. 100%. That is going to pass, 100%. It's hard. You will, find, you will feel like the whole world is falling on you, but just don't give up. Believe in it. Do what you have to do. Do your homework. Yeah. Don't rely, don't, don't expect that the sky is going to rain and everything is going to just fall on your lap. It's not going to happen. Do your work, but don't give up. That's, I yeah. think, the best advice. And always, like, one thing also you've mentioned, too, is you always have that sort of sense of learning. Yes. But that's know? a constant thing. And and that's yeah. exactly it. Like, you, you cannot just show up and expect that you know everything. And if you do, you're in trouble. 100%. Because life is changing. What you know yesterday is not going to be the same thing exactly. tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. So much to learn here. Really appreciate you uh, being on the show here, Sophie. And uh, for folks that are watching, thank you so much for uh, for watching us. You know, please go out and, and check out uh, Cafe Cristal in Barhaven. Fantastic spot. I've been there many times. I've been on many dates. I've been also on many networking events and amazing for client meetings. The atmosphere, the, you know, the way it is, it's just homey. The service and the food is delicious. It's actually 
part of the reasons why I have some of the weight. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit the like button and then subscribe as well so you can get that little bell icon. And then that way you can get more and more episodes about this and learn more about uh, businesses around the city and make Canada on the rocks one of your uh, channels. And thanks again for watching. Have a good day. Thanks again, Sophie. Thank you, Fadi. Thanks. Thank you.